Okay, everyone, and hello, and welcome, and this is Shepard here uh, with something a little bit different. Uh, this is not sponsored content. I know those of you who usually watch me for Monster Hunter are like, what the hell is this? It's just, uh, I like asymmetrical multiplayer games, and Hood, Outlaws, and Legends is a game that just came out. They did sponsor me to play their game, but they are not sponsoring me to make this video. And I just thought it was interesting. I, I don't know that we'll do a whole series of this. But th for those of you who have stumbled upon this, hey, welcome. Uh, we are going to be going through a breakdown of John slash The Brawler. All right, and just to let you guys know, I stream basically every day over at twitch.tv slash sdshepherd. Stream usually around 1 to 5 p.m. or so Eastern Standard Times with some late nights, Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Love to see you guys over there. Check it out if you like watching this video. We're going to go over his pros, his cons, uh, what makes him somewhat unique in terms of his abilities and his grenade. And then we're going to do some commentary to kind of give you some of my thought uh, process as I'm going through the match, both in terms of the, you know, actual tactical things in which you can do 1v1 in terms of engaging the other enemies, as well as, you know, overall strategy, things you should be thinking of in terms of what points you should be taking, where you should be standing, uh, what you should be telling your teammates and things like that. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So he is the strongest in close quarters. Uh, he has some mobility through in terms of lifting portcullis. He cranks the fastest and he has the highest health pool. Um, so in terms of like actual close quarters combat, uh, characters like the assassin or the um, ranger it, it directly almost stand no chance against you if you're actually like 1v1 against them. Um, assuming especially if they're outside of ammo, uh, your damage deals so much. You're obviously tied with other Johns and against the monks, um, you have to be a little bit careful because they can outrange you, uh, but you should still have more life than them. Uh, in terms of being able to crank, it does say he cranks the fastest. I don't have any discrete analysis on John in terms of being able to show whether or not that's true. I assume it's true. <laughs> so if you have a John and uh, you are not playing as John and John is standing next to the crank, let him crank instead of you. Otherwise, um, it's okay there. All right, so in terms of weaknesses, like we were saying before, he's got the shortest range. He has the slowest stamina recovery. He's got a slow assassination animation. And he is also very vulnerable to assassination because if he's going up against ranged characters, he has to be very careful not to get shot in the head and people might sneak up behind him. So you can see here, I'm trying to fight another assassin. And this is clearly an experienced player. They know how to use their stamina uh, against me in terms of being able to dodge out of the way. Here's a four-way analysis. I'm going to go ahead and sync this up so everybody's stamina is drained at the same time. You can see how every character has a stamina advantage over John. So if you're fighting him, make him, make him with his attacks and then punish him because it will take longer for him to regain his stamina. So we can see here, I'm, again, I'm, I'm going against that uh, hunt, uh, assassin. And because I was so focused on her, unable to use range, I was able to get assassinated there. So his ult makes it so that normally his weakness against range more or less goes away. It is very difficult for any range characters to kill you while you're doing that. So you will win almost any 1v1. You could even win some 2v1s. Occasionally you could even win a 3v1, but that is extremely rare and would require you to really get the drop on a bunch of enemies. All right, and while this content is not sponsored directly, I was sponsored on my Twitch channel to play this game. So if you are gonna check the game out, please check out the description for a link. Uh, it'll let Focus Interactive know that uh, me as a content creator was able to drive more people to the game. So maybe they'll wanna work with me more in the future. And I would appreciate that. And here's a little combat scenario where I got in a little bit too deep. I lost a lot of health but I'm able to use my grenade in order to take out a, a monk who just used up his ult. So that was extremely good value there. Although I did die anyways. <laughs> okay, so I do not have all of the perks unlocked, but we are gonna talk a little bit about the perks that I, I do have unlocked as well as the perks that I've chosen to use. So first unlock you get is Dying Retaliation. This has zero downsides, so as soon as you get this, no reason not to use it. Warcry came up. I didn't really like it that much. PvE in this game is not that big of a deal. And um, 
yeah, I mean, you're just, it's rarely ever going to be an issue that going against the guards is going to be a problem. You're already incredibly powerful against them. You don't need to be more incredibly powerful. Uh, Surging Smash does seem like an upgrade. Um, it does cost more stamina. However, even though John does have a downside with his stamina being lower, assuming you land the sprint attack, being able to basically one hit KO the softer characters in the game uh, much more reliably, to me feels like it's worth the upgrade. So far, at least in terms of going against other players, they don't seem to be balancing or managing their stamina very well either. If you start finding more players, and maybe after this video comes out, people start realizing that they need to take advantage of John's lack of stamina better, maybe go back to Dying Retaliation, could be okay, but for now, this is what I'm using. Charging Assault, uh, you know, his ult is so powerful, being able to make his sprint speed faster, as well as increase the duration could be okay, but I would kind of need to compare the numbers to see if that would be worthwhile either way. Perk 2, no... No issue with stable tank. Obviously, more health is always good. Uh, likewise, stamina is John's weak spot. So being able to reduce his stamina while blocking is basically like required. Sticky explosive is cool, but it's not like you really are going to get it that much more often. You know, I mean, it would more or less guarantee killing a person. And it does increase his ranged option as being a little bit more reliable if you're going up against a particularly good Marianne or Robin. Um, or even a took, I suppose, but even still, I feel like being able to make his melee that much more effective, make you that much more of an effective melee fighter. I think I would still take stable tank over it. Being able to have more grenades as well as increased damage radius could be okay. I would really need to see how much of a bigger radius it would have though. But to have two grenades with much, much larger radius, I think I would take that over Sticky Explosive. Uh, finally, Cargo Carrier, I don't know. It doesn't seem to help that much. I mean, Rapid Winching is okay, but Capture Points being claimed at a slower rate make it a little bit doubtful that it's something that you'd want to have, especially when you have this one option that, again, has basically zero downsides and Amplified Explosives, which as well has zero downsides. Again, really something that I'd have to see like a really close side-by-side -side analysis to really see whether it'd be worth using or not. So in range diffusion, super good, you know, light attacks, counter heavy attacks, heavy attacks, counter blocks, and then blocks, counter light attacks. In any case, being able to use a more stamina efficient move, such as a light attack to be able to kill faster is always good as well as making it easier to counter heavy attacks. Relentless strength, kind of nice. I mean, obviously one of John's weak spots is he's going to be taking some damage from ranged attacks. There's not really much he can do other than try to block it. That being said, this does take away the ability meter gained for blocking projectiles if you even get it in the first place. To me, being a stronger melee combatant makes more sense than Relentless Strength. Rampaging Onslaught could be good, but like a lot of the other perks that we've talked about, I feel like unless I were to actually see a side-by-side -side comparison, it would be hard to say whether or not it'd be worth using. Likewise, the ability me meter resetting upon death could be a really big deal. You know, usually you want to save that for like that final scrimmage around the treasure chest as it's being extracted. And if you don't have that up, and it's just gone immediately, that means you might not ever have it up because it's going to be a lot of trading back and forth. If you could actually get it for two kills, maybe. Otherwise, it seems like almost too heavy of a downside to be worth choosing over Enraged Infusion. So here we're just going to jump into the live analysis. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more freeform about the state of the game in general. So I was a little taken by surprise here. I was expecting a normal load-in and here I am, I'm like, oh, hey guys, what's what's going on? Trying to figure out where our state in the game is. So I see that we somehow have the key, even though presumably we were 2v4. I see that B is occupied, and I figured let may as well take B and then take C to cut them off from being able to just con constantly respawn on top of us. It's important to remember that the respawns in this are pretty short, um, 10 going up until maybe about 20 seconds as it either goes later in the game or as you die more. I don't know which one it is exactly. Enemy hunter. So I can see two of them already right there. I definitely don't want to be directly within line of sight of them because I know they can try and shoot me. Uh. 
You can see there immediately, you know, the, the jumping strong attack is extremely powerful. But I, I killed two and I wounded one, which feels okay. <laughs> Definitely was able to slow, slow them down so that our team could get a better idea of where the vault is. It seems like they're really struggling to find the vault. I don't know exactly what's going on. If you have the vault key, it says specifically, you know, the first floor, the, you know, the zero floor. It's in like the British system. So if you're from the NA, uh, minus one from every floor. If it says the first floor, it means go up one level. For us, that would be the second floor. But you should communicate with your teammates. Now, this game, you don't need a microphone. It is not required. You can still win without a microphone, especially if you're really good at tagging other players or even if there's like one or two people on the team that are trying to communicate, that could work. But it really is the sort of game where a microphone will increase your win percentage dramatically. You're able to communicate what you want to do. You're able to listen to what your team wants to do. They're able to warn you about enemies that might be sneaking up behind them and, and vice versa. So those are things that will give you a major advantage. I want to take A, but I already see that we have another teammate on that. And I see three of them there with the key. And somehow, some reason, they do not notice me. <laughs> they should know that there is a large burly man running down after them. So I'm out of stamina. So I know I want to stand behind this pillar and recover my stamina. I know that is my biggest weakness. And I know his biggest strength is that he's got his arrows and he could shoot me in the head if I'm not blocking. But as we can see, he probably should have ran earlier while I was recovering my stamina. Maybe he could have gotten a good assassination by going around the corner from me or, or something else. So somehow my team has no idea where the vault is and they, they, they didn't tell me because none of them have microphones, but that's okay. We're going to try and find out where they are anyways. And so I found it. Now, this is maybe not advised. If you are completely alone and you have no other one around you and your entire team has just been killed, probably should not open up the vault door, probably should not, uh, you know, reduce that animation of grabbing the chest. I think you do get experience for opening up the vault and that could be tempting, but generally better to fall back and regroup with your team 19. because now obviously we have the chest. Every time we're able to move forward with the chest and take it closer to wherever it is we want to go, uh, we're in a better, better shape. This map is actually really good for discussing the strategy. So this map in particular has a very hard advantage to whoever can get the chest to whatever extraction point they want. Not only we benefited by the fact that this started in the church, if we can get this to the west side of the map, then that means that we will always have a respawn point directly next to it. So there's no way they could capture that. In their situation, if we get it all the way in the west side of the map, they have to maintain control of that closest control point to even stay close to us. So I'm not going to say that I very specifically went through this route to confuse the enemies because I screwed that up entirely by finding a guard. However, um, I think it ends up working out anyways. Again, the goal is to get this towards the sunken village uh, waypoint because that's going to be the best place for us. If I were on the enemy team and I was trying to recover this, I would just try to get it to the ruins. That way it's at least at a stalemate between the two of us and we don't have to really worry about it. And because they already have control of B and C, that would probably work out anyways. I should probably point out, somehow this is a team of three Johns, which is completely ridiculous. <laughs> this is not a team that should necessarily win. Uh, I know on their team, they have many ranged users. However, as we'll see, and as I will likely discuss later, if you are playing as a ranged user, you need to be able to A, um, stay hidden. You know, if you're constantly getting seen by guards and we can see where you are, the element of surprise that you would have in terms of being able to like headshot us while we don't know where you are is completely gone. 
As we can see here, though, uh, again, like I said earlier, one of John's weaknesses, one of the brawler's weaknesses, is getting assassinated. So Marianne was able to get in there and assassinate me so quickly that um, I wasn't able to get uh, rescued by my team. You can kill people that are assassinating you, but she's just so fast. And the way her animation works where she rolls under you kind of makes it very difficult to stop someone from doing it. Whereas we know with his assassination, it's very slow. So he could very easily be headshot or killed by someone else while he's doing it. This is really weird, by the way. This is very strange. If I were them, I would be taking this chest and running away. Uh, taking it out onto that bridge or leaving it by this bridge puts them in a situation where it's going to be right next to our, our control point, the sunken village. They don't do that. I mean, no spoilers. I mean, maybe even more ridiculous. For some reason, their brawler is holding up the gate. And even more ridiculous, I get my head smushed. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. It happens like every third or fourth match I have in this game, I have the portcullis fall on my head. So I don't know what else to say other than please laugh, I guess. I don't know. He didn't even die. I hit him with the sledgehammer. He didn't even die. So I would not say that that was a very well-timed ult on the Robin's part. You really want to use that explosive grenade as like a real guarantee in terms of being able to like confirm a kill. So like initially you would think, oh, grab the chest and run. But my feeling was take advantage that the, they're already down a person kill their team, capture this control point, and get an advantage before we move the chest. Because it's clear to me that, at least, that they're not... they're not in any hurry to move that chest away. Enemy hunter. Again, I'm, I'm always trying to mark the enemies when I can. It's not just for my own benefit, it's for the my team's benefit as well. They highlight a little bit we all know what we're going after. <laughs> that was just unnecessary, but kind of cool anyways. All right, so now we've completely secured this area. We've we've secured that waypoint. The sheriff is unfortunately right there. I don't even know what to do right now. <laughs> Everything got ruined. The, about the only thing I can do is try to keep an eye uh, at the gate. See if I can help us get through. And fortunately, one of them had a grenade. So that was that's able to get us a little bit closer to where we need to go. And again, just dropping the chest down here, even closer to the second village, gets us even much more closer to being able to be to our objective. So again, Huntress really not using... Um, her advantage, you know, her assassination is very good. Just standing and not being hidden near the bottom of that ladder um, was not good positioning on her part. The purple guys are, are really, really hard to take down, necessarily solo. Again, the enemy team still seems to be more focused on actually fighting us than moving the chest. Uh, important to point out, you know, this isn't really like a team deathmatch. Like, this is, you know, objective-based in... For them to not be trying to take the chest and run it away 
um, when we're down is is not a good play. They want to get it towards B if they can. Enemy hunter. So that was an assassin up there. Um, their single shot from their bows is somewhat accurate. Obviously, it does less damage. Uh, I could hear her cocking up to three arrows, though, which means that they would likely be a little bit less accurate. So a little less worried about that. So taking these early points is really fine. There, there's no risk there. But when you're cranking, though, you do want to keep an idea in your mind of like how many enemies have gone down recently, how long it's been, how close they are to grouping up and, and getting back together. Getting this this point right here, you usually want to start stopping and wait to clear them off because there's like, it's very unlikely you're going to be able to crank all the way through unless like literally everybody's gone AFK. So like, you know, it's going to feel bad, but like be slow and be patient because what will likely end up happening is if you keep cranking, you'll have one or two people down. You'll then have four V2 on your uh, going against your own team. And then it'll be, you know, four V2 again as you try to hold. And then you'll be like one or two pips away or, or you know, God, you know, one pip away from them just stealing the chest. And you don't want that. I'm, by the way, communicating this to my team. That doesn't necessarily that my team is listening to me. But I'm communicating it to you so that if you're playing this game, you can think about that sort of strategy yourself. So I see a John coming. And the question is, is whether or not it's going to be safe to do this. Now, I know we're still only three anyways. I, I tell my guy, like, hey, a grenade's coming. I've been saving my ult until this final moment here. Now, the one downside, now the game lies to you. The game says you can use your ult and crank faster. That is not the case. Your ult needs to be down. But we got it anyways. So I kind of body blocked, although I should have probably been actually blocking. I stopped the arrow and so we ended up winning. All right. So if you guys enjoyed uh, this commentary, uh, let me know down below if you want to see more character analysis in terms of the meta, in terms of how the characters are uh, both uh, have unique advantages versus disadvantages towards one another. Uh, let me know that as well. If you hate it and you only want to see Mod Center from now, I, mean, I guess you can let me know that in the comments down below. Otherwise, until next time, it's Shepard saying good luck. Have a good hunt.